Throughout European history, witches have always been known to entrance and manipulate young men. These men were made to do the witch's bidding and aid them in the bewitching of others. A common tale told in all parts of Europe is that of the witch-ridden man. The witch would transform men into beasts of burden, like horses or oxen. These transfigured creatures would be worked to death it was a terrible fate for anyone who dared to cross paths with a witch. Today's tale is of a Scottish witch who had much in common with her sisters on the continent. The Witch's Bridal few miles north of Selkirk, in the Scottish borders, sits the village of Yarrowford. In this village, there was known to be a great blacksmith. His skills in smithing was surpassed by no other for many miles around. But as the smith grew in age, he wished to pass on the skills that he'd learned, so he let it be known that he required the assistance of two apprentices. People came from far and wide to offer their services to the smith, but the man eventually decided on a pair of brothers from his home village of Yarrowford. The brothers were both strong and healthy lads. They grasped the opportunity to learn from the smith and put in many hours of hard work. For the first few months, the smith was very pleased with his new apprentices, but over the last few weeks, he saw that the younger of the brothers began to grow weaker and was struggling more and more to handle the workload. The smith questioned him on numerous occasions, but the younger brother always assured the smith that nothing was wrong and that he would try and work harder. The elder brother also began to worry. He had noticed his younger sibling was not eating and was becoming more gaunt and pale by the day. On one afternoon, while the smith was away in business, the elder brother demanded the truth from his sibling. There was something wrong and he would not let it be till he knew what it was. The younger man broke down and began to cry. It's her, the blacksmith's wife. She will be the death of me. She will bring me to my grave. The young man told his brother that the smith's wife was actually a powerful witch and that each night over the last month she would come to his bedside and put upon him a bewitched horse's bridle that morphed the man into a great horse. The evil witch would then mount the horse and force it to gallop many miles deep into the dark moorland, where she would meet with other witches and foul beasts to revel in the midnight hours. Then at first light she would ride the horse home and remove its bridle, returning the younger brother to his true form, but so exhausted that he could barely stand. This, he told his brother, happened night after night, and if it did not stop soon, he was sure to die. The elder brother thought long and hard about how he could aid his bewitched kin. He agreed that the smith was unlikely to believe such wild accusations against his own wife, so the pair decided they must tackle this situation alone. The elder brother said that for this night at least, he would risk his life with the witches, so that the younger brother could sleep. So that evening, the brothers swapped beds, and sure enough, as darkness fell, the door was pushed open. The witch quietly entered and placed the magical bridle upon the elder brother, morphing him into a beautiful black horse. Leaping upon his back, the witch rode off into the night. The witch did not head to the moors. Instead, she headed to the cellar of a neighbouring laird, there she left the horse in the stable and quickly joined the other witches who were partaking in the laird's wine. The horse now left alone and out of sight began to rub its head against the wall until the magical bridle loosened and fell to the floor. Instantly, the brother reverted to his true form. Then he crawled into a dark corner of the stable and patiently waited for the witch to return. After a few hours, the brother heard the drunken voices and mistimed steps of the witches exiting the cellar. The stable door opened 
and the smith's wife stumbled in, looking quite confused as to the whereabouts of her horse. Suddenly the brother leapt upon the woman and forced the bridle over her head. Instantly, the woman was changed into a fine grey mare. The man mounted the horse and the pair galloped off at quite a pace. Through hedges and over ditches the man rode the horse until he noticed that the beast had lost a shoe. The elder brother took the horse to the nearest smith and quickly had two shoes fitted to her forelegs. Back on the grey mare once more, the brother now entered a freshly ploughed field and began to ride the horse from one end of the field to the other. Back and forth the pair went for many hours until the horse could barely walk. Then just as the sun was rising, the brother rode the horse home, pulled off the bridle and let the weary woman return to her bed beside the blacksmith. That morning the smith woke as usual, but when he went to rouse his wife, she complained of suffering from a heavy illness and would not leave bed today. The smith quickly woke his apprentices and sent them to fetch a local doctor. With all haste, the brothers returned with the doctor in tow and entered the bedchambers of the smith. The doctor politely asked to take the woman's pulse by holding her wrist. But strangely, the woman would refuse to let the doctor near her. Finally losing his patience, the smith pulled off the bedclothes and to his horror saw that his wife had two horseshoes nailed to her hands and that her sides were covered in dark bruises where the brother had roughly kicked her while spanning the field. The brothers now told the smith of the bridle, the mower and the cellar. The smith was broken hearted but believed his young apprentices. The next day, the witch was taken before the magistrates of Selkirk and condemned to be burned alive at the stake. The smith and the brothers returned to their work and within a month or two, the younger brother looked much better. He had regained his colour and was no longer the gaunt, weary creature he had been. It was said that the elder brother destroyed the magical bridle in the blacksmith's fire, but some think that he may have hidden it and that it may still be out there to this very day. Thank you for listening. Also, if you would like to support my future work, please consider joining my new Patreon. There will be a link in the description. Once again, thank you all for listening.